Hi, I'm Hal Aronson, co-director of the Solar Schoolhouse, which is a project of the Rahus Institute. Today in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use the solar cell classroom set. And uh, the purpose of the set is to give students hands-on experience making electricity using sunlight. What we're going to do today is we're going to first take a look at what's inside the set, and then we're going to practice wiring three different types of circuits. A simple circuit, a series circuit, and finally a parallel circuit. And then if time and energy permit, we will actually do some more complex wiring with the solar cells. And this might be useful for some of your students who like to push the envelope. So let's take a look inside. You've got a solar cell mounted on a firm substrate. These puppies take light and turn it directly into electricity. And out of it come two wires. And these are the two um, ends of the circuit. There's the positive end, which is symbolized with the red wire, and the negative side of the circuit, which is symbolized with the black wire. Okay, a solar cell, or any electrical device, has two qualities to the electricity. There's the voltage, and there's the amperage. Voltage measures the electromotive force um, that's produced by the electrical source. In this case, this, and this is measured in volts, in this case, this cell produces a half a volt. That is the nature of silicon cells. They produce 0.5 volts. Unlike a battery, which is, which the chemistry of a battery is that it produces about 1.5 volts. So whether the solar cell was as big as me or this small or the size of my thumbnail it would always produce about a half a volt. The other thing that an electrical source produces that we measure is amperage, which is measures the volume or the amount of electrons that it will push through a circuit. And the size of a solar cell, not the chemistry, but its size determines how much amperage it'll produce, also the amount of light that hits it. But in a given amount of light, like let's say sunlight, the size of the cell is directly proportional to how much amps or how much current it'll produce. Think of volts as like the pressure, the water pressure, in a plumbing system and amps as the amount of actual droplets of water or gallons per minute flowing through the pipes. Now let me just show you a different size cell. I'm going to grab a larger solar module and we'll see that this module is made of many solar cells stuck together. Let's look at one single solar cell. You can see that this cell is significantly bigger than the one we have in the solar cell set. And what that means is that it can produce more amps or a larger amount of electrons flowing through the circuit. About, this is about maybe six or eight times bigger than the solar cell, and it produces about six or eight times as many amps of current flowing through the cell. The voltage coming from this solar cell is the same as the voltage that will come from this solar cell. So when you multiply volts times amps, that gives you the watts, which is a measurement of the power that the solar cell or the solar module can produce. Now, a solar cell is really nice, but for students and for most of us, we'd like to be able to see something happen. So in addition to having solar cells in this kit, we also have a load. These are DC motors, and they're designed to handle one to six volts. The solar cells are half a volt, so they just barely power the motor with one solar cell, but they will still work. This motor is very tolerant of abuse as long as you don't put over six volts into it. It's not polarity restricted. It can actually turn in either direction. Now a motor spinning by itself is not all that interesting to students. It actually needs to be turning something. So in this kit, we have propellers and wheels, which can be attached to the motors. Also in the kit, we have these little alligator clips. And these uh, operate like this, like an alligator. It opens its jaws, and it will squeeze the two metal ends of a terminal and hold them together, making a good electrical connection. And we also have a fun little whirly gig or sun dancer, which we'll demonstrate later, later in our program. To see for yourself how to wire up the motor to the solar cell, we have a page in your solar home guidebook which covers all three wiring configurations, project number 12. Now, the simple circuit has an awful lot of learning in it. I encourage you just to give the students, maybe in pairs, these four elements, a solar cell, a motor, a wheel or propeller, and something to make the connections with, these pinchers, for example, and have them experiment. Don't tell them how to do it. Just say, see if you can make this thing go. And that, that will turn it into an exciting project for them. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and make that connection for you. First I get the wire ready and you'll see that from the motor there's two terminals. It doesn't really matter which one you use. If the positive comes in one end, the motor will spin in one direction. If it comes out on this end, it'll spin in the opposite direction. We'll actually play with that in a little bit. So to make our connection, we take the negative wire and we take our alligator clip and we have metal touching metal and that's the key thing here and we use the metal of the alligator clip to also reinforce that connection. And now we have a pretty good connection. And we just do the same thing with the positive side. Put the metal wire, the metal part of the wire against the metal part of the terminal from the motor. And we make that connection. There we go. And that's good. Put the propeller on the motor. Just push it on about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And once you do this, don't have your students take it apart. When they try to pull it off, they might break the propeller. Have one student hold the motor and the other student put the solar cell out in the sun. Right now we have simulated sunlight. It's not nearly as powerful as the sun. It's going to get some light. And it may not go immediately because a lamp is not nearly as powerful as the sun, but I'll give it a little encouragement because it's probably a motor that hasn't been used yet. It's a little sticky. And there it's starting to go. But now you can see that with a little bit of a tender push, we have the light hitting the solar cell, generating an electrical current, and the electricity flows through our circuit into the motor and then back again. Let me go ahead and, and break that circuit for a second. See how it immediately stops? And now I'll touch the metal to the wire again, and we can get it going again. You see that? We almost, we've got what we'd call a primitive switch on because the circuit is closed, off when the circuit is open. Now I'm going to show you something else, which is reversing polarity. I'm going to rehook this up. Notice the direction of the rotation of this fan blade. It's going this way, which is counterclockwise. Now I'm going to reverse polarity. Watch how this is done. I Disconnect the wires, and this wire, which was connected to the black or the negative coming out of the source, is now going to be moved to the red. So I've reversed the wires here, changing the direction in which the electricity flows. And let's see what that does to how the circuit operates. Okay. See now the direction of the blade is going this way, which is, which is clockwise. Okay, so that's what it means to reverse polarity. Some things don't like polarity being reversed and other things are fine with it. A DC motor generally is fine with it. A radio is not okay with that. Uh, a light bulb doesn't really care what direction the electricity flows. Okay, now one more thing I want to show you and that is a short circuit. Maybe your students will get this wired up. They'll have everything looking good, but the propeller won't go. Now what might be happening is they might actually be having the metal connecting the red wire touches the metal connecting the black wire. See that? It stops. What's happening in a short circuit is that the electricity is not even going to the load. It's just going up the red wire and back down the black wire, making a little short circuit. So make sure the two wires aren't touching each other. Now it's okay to have a short circuit here because it's not a whole lot of electricity. It, would, it wouldn't melt the wire or anything. Mm -hmm.